Steve, and I'm broadcasting from suburban Chicago. And this is a voice crying in the wilderness. I'd like to take the opportunity to share what's on my heart tonight. And one of it is going to be, what does it mean to live for God and be born again? But before I get into that, I just want to take the opportunity to pray for my friend James Carter, who is in Indiana right now in Fort Wayne, and he's doing these outreaches in in uh, Indiana. He's doing them in Kendallville and Fort Wayne. I just want to take the opportunity to continue to pray for him as he continues to reach people for Christ because it is so desperately needed. Now, on to what I want to talk about tonight, and I'll give you an example. Uh, my question is, my thing tonight is, what does it mean to live for, what does it mean to be born again and live for God? But before I explain that, I'm going to first read out of 2 Corinthians 5 through 21, and here's what it says. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are home that in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live in faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say. I would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before judgment before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade men. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than as what is in the heart. If we are out of mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them was, was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, and as through God, we are making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So there you have it, folks. So basically what the verse is basically saying is that when we are born again, all of the old has gone away. Once, once we go down in the water, we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, and all of our sins are washed away. All of the old is gone, and now it is our ch turn to live for Him. Now, I'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of my testimony to try to kind of explain myself. I was born I was born in the city of, probably was born in Chicago. Uh, I'm an only child. I had no brothers and sisters. Uh, I basically came from a, a, a non-practicing Catholic family that didn't go to church. So my journey through Christ is kind of like this. When I was growing up, I never really had a relationship with Jesus although I knew I knew right from wrong I knew who God was I I knew because I was raised Catholic I knew that there was a right and wrong but I never really had that relationship with Jesus and that didn't basically happen until my mom passed away in 2005 
but basically me me as a child growing up i i was kind of like an only child I was kind of like a geeky guy i didn't have very many friends to confide in and although i had some i i wasn't a very popular kid and i wasn't somebody that kind of fit into the crowd even in middle school or in high school i really didn't fit in too well but i was a really smart kid and i did i did the i did the very best i could you know i had some challenges in life um, I mean, I had, I was just a little, a little disabled, a little bit of a learning disability. But uh, despite all the challenges, I proved everybody wrong. I was an excellent reader. Uh, I was an excellent leader, and I actually cared for people. But the truth is, is I never really had a, a relationship with Christ. It was not until my mom passed away from diabetes in 2005. When she passed away, I went through a lot of heartache, and it was very difficult for me. And I, I felt that there was really no one to turn to. And I really, I didn't have very much help from family. And my mom was, so I was sort of like a mama's boy. I stayed in the house. I was with with her all the time and I was just really used to having her around and when she passed away at the age of 58 I felt really kind of lost that was and, and I was living in my apartment as I am now but so it was not until a neighbor a na one of the neighbors that we my mom made friends with and we made friends with in our apartment entered as uh, and right after my mom passed away she convinced me that I should start coming to church and as 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 much grief as I was in, it was a very extremely difficult time. Uh, uh, losing my mom and I in October two thousand five was a really difficult thing to do. But I had made a conscientious decision that may and and the reason I decided to start going to church is because I felt that it would probably be a, be a great way to be around some good people, meet some Christian friends, and start getting connected uh, I think today after some of the experiences I had just being in a lot of different churches meeting new people I'm very thankful of the new job that I have right now and that's you know I'm work for a Christian publishing company and I work as a custodian during the evening so I'm very thankful for some of the things that I have in like I'm thankful for food I'm thankful for shelter there's a lot of people out there that that have so much and they're not very appreciative of what they have. Well, not here. I'm very appreciative of what I've had. I'm thankful that I have a roof on my head. I'm thankful I have a steady job. And I'm just thankful I have money coming in and a church family to depend on. But just going along with my story, so it was about 2006, and I just started going to this uh, one small church, and then I went to these other different churches and my my journey has been a very long and difficult journey but with god with god's guidance he guided me through it was probably about i don't know 2013 or 2014 when i decided uh to kind of uh, give my life to christ and i decided to be baptized and live for him and it was i believe it was about 20 uh 2013 or 2014 did I decide to give my life to the Lord because that was the on, only way that I was ever going to feel feel more secure and just and have a new life and ever since then since I gave my life to Christ I have uh, although I haven't been a perfect person I have done to the best of my ability to try to live for him and try to bless each other, bless others in a very different way and I'll just kind of a kind of give you a little bit of an example of what happened to me tonight I work as a custodian and and I go in the warehouse and and today I happen to find someone's wallet sitting in the warehouse and it's just sitting there and 
and I'm just and there's there's it's, it's somebody left it there and it had a lot of money in it and I wasn't going to take it because I knew it was wrong but I felt it was it was on my heart to return it and I wanted to get it to the right person I felt because the money uh, I wasn't going to take the money but I just did it because I felt it was the right thing to do so I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the wallet because it didn't have any identification but I, I finally opened it I looked at there was a lot of money in it and it just seemed like really strange that people with somebody would just leave their wallet sitting in the warehouse and it being unattended so anyway I kept on looking for the wallet and I eventually I found the found the person's name and I knew who it was and then I went to somebody in my work and I returned it to them and I made sure that she got her wallet back so I feel that I did something really good for her and I did something good for Christ and she did bless me with something and you know she didn't have to do that I'm just very thankful that it happened but why did I you know why I mean why did I return the wall because I felt it was the right thing to do it was on my heart it was what God was telling me to do and if you're ever in a situation I'd say that for you if you ever find something that is basically not yours listen to what God is telling you and just you know to listen to what God is telling you pray decide what is the right thing to do should shouldn't you re return something that that is that doesn't that doesn't necessarily belong to you or just belongs to somebody else so that that's kind of what you have to do so that's kind of what I did so when, when you when you're basically born again you have to do more than when you when you when you're actually a, a child of God and when you're actually living Living for Christ you have to do more than just be born again you have to show it with your actions you have to show what you do you have to show your love for Christ you have to you have to be an example to other people and you need to show your love for Christ you have to show you how how, how much uh, how much you love other people you have to basically you have to give a little and 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 just give more to people and show your love not just not just talk about it in verses but actually show people how much of a godly person you are so that's just kind of an example uh, of kind of what I, what happened to me tonight so basically my whole point is that when you're basically born again and what those verses says back in uh, Corinthians 5 through 21 the old is gone away and it's no longer there and a new you comes about and that's what you have to do you have to learn to live for God you have to live for him and you have to you basically have to you have to walk what you're talking there's a lot of people out there that say they love God but they don't nest they're not necessarily showing it and yes as my friend James would say is there are a lot of people in our churches right now that that are that are Christian but they're not really living for him they're so I mean there's no matter where you go there's a lot of people that lie they go in there they they go in there every Sunday morning they say they say their little prayers and then they go out there and they live for the world and they're not necessarily living for Christ so it's not about religion it's actually about having a relationship with Christ it's actually living for him you have to do more than just saying you're a child of God you need to show it by the actions and what you do if you find a find a wallet on the street or find something that doesn't belong to you return it do it do it do it not for you do it is because it's what God is telling you to do if you see somebody in need and they need help and they truly need help you need to help them uh, if you if you see somebody walking in a church building and they're new and they and they don't know anybody it is your position to not let them just stand there you need to walk up to them you need to say hello you need to introduce yourself and you need to introduce them to some other people that's how you show your God's love for other people 
people. If more people would do that than just sitting there every Sunday morning and just saying, well, I love God, but then they go out there and they try to live for the world. So I try to try to live for Christ in the best way I know. And that's kind of what I wanted to explain to you guys tonight. And I have more I'd like to add, but I just wanted to share what's on my heart tonight. So I would just ask everybody, if you want to you want to show that you're truly born again and truly live for him, show it by, by your actions. Show it by what you do. Don't just go out there and say, well, I'm, I'm doing this. Just go out there and show it by your actions. You need to be living for Christ each and every day, just like my friend James is out there doing. He's out there preaching the word to everybody. I hope he does. I think it's important if whatever he wants, whatever you want to do in life you want to travel across the country and you want to preach the gospel to people you do whatever God is telling you to do you do whatever God is leading you to do if he is leading you to be a missionary in a foreign country then that's what you do if he if he is leading you he's telling you he wants you to help people in need and help homeless people that's what you do you need to show that you love Christ show it with your actions so that's kind of all I wanted to, to say tonight. So I'll just w wish you a very good evening, and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.